My dear brothers and sisters, Danielle here again. This message is the result of the Holy Spirit clearing up some confusion I was left with after watching a video recently which seemed to present some compelling evidence that we are to keep the Sabbath as a literal day, Saturday, of rest. The confusion arose because I had previously been guided by the Holy Spirit through various revelations from Scripture and by the confirmation of some of my brothers and sisters in Christ that Jesus Christ himself is our Sabbath rest. This being brought about through him fulfilling the written law so that it can be written on our hearts by the Holy Spirit. There is more to this revelation though and I am quickly learning that God does things on multiple levels simultaneously with each level synergistically emphasising the other in powerful confirmation. Recently the Holy Spirit brought together a small group of us in close fellowship with each having gifts designed to function in a complementary way as parts of the body of Christ, his church on earth. In my confusion, I pleaded with God to give me an answer as to the issue of the Sabbath, but I pleaded for him to answer using a gift I have not been provided with, namely, the ability to hear the voice of Jesus directly and audibly. I was desperate for a direct and unmistakable answer. After all, most of my income comes from working Friday and Saturday nights, and if I was breaking one of God's laws, I needed to do something about it. My prayers were direct and passionate, but it appears I needed a not-so-subtle reminder that God does speak to me directly, but not using an auditory voice. Anyway, I was tired and it was time for me to get some sleep, so off I went to bed. I figured I would spend the next day fasting and praying, awaiting God's answers. It was halfway through the night that I was reminded with startling clarity how God has chosen to communicate with me. He speaks to me predominantly through dreams and visions, and I was awoken suddenly after being given a scriptural reference to read. I sleep with my Bible next to me, so I picked it up and read. Hebrews chapter 3, 7 to 9. So, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion, during the time of testing in the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me, and for forty years saw what I did. Wow, a pretty clear answer there. Indeed, I have heard his voice. Immediately I was aware that my earlier prayers seeking another gift was a form of rebellion and a step in hardening my heart. God has graciously and lovingly provided me a gift I have learnt quickly to embrace, and here I am rejecting it and seeking something else. God was also lovingly but firmingly warning me of the consequences of rejecting his gifts. Immediately I thanked God for his reminder and asked him to forgive me for my lack of faith then I went back to sleep with a big smile on my heart. That was not the end of it though. No sooner had I gone back to sleep than I was awakened by yet another scripture reference. 2 Kings chapter 1, 1 to 4. After Ahab's death, Moab rebelled against Israel. Now Ahaziah had fallen through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and injured himself. So he sent messengers saying to them, Go and consult Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron to see if I will recover from this injury. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Go up and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and ask them, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going off to consult Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore this is what the Lord says, You will not leave the bed you are lying on, you will certainly die. So Elijah went. God had not finished warning me here. This is a message with multiple layers. A couple of clear points here are that by trying to force myself to hear Jesus speaking to me in a way he has not intended opens doors for Satan to sneak in and deceive me. Once again, I should put my trust in what I have been shown already by the Holy Spirit and graciously accept and embrace the gifts I have been lovingly given by my Father in Heaven. My gift is the gift of dreams and visions. My brother in Christ, Ray's gift, is to hear Jesus speaking to him audibly and others we fellowship with have different gifts all functioning together for the glorification of God as parts of his body of Christ. What good is it for the body to have two right arms or two left feet? Another layer of this message is that not all information presented to us comes via the Holy Spirit. Some of it comes as a result of intellectual reasoning. Such reasoning, without the guidance of the Holy Spirit, is blind and will lead to confusion. It is the reasoning of those who are dead in spirit and leads to deception. Such is the case with the information presented in the video I watched about keeping the Sabbath physically. This denies the very fact that Jesus Christ is our Sabbath rest. 
there isn't room in this video to get into those details, but I suggest if you have any questions on this, seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit for yourselves, and He will reveal the truth to you, as He has done to many of us born in the Spirit. Okay, off to sleep I go again, but you guessed it, not for long. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. A powerful reminder of the precious gift that is our guide, the Holy Spirit, provided as a result of the work Jesus Christ did here on earth as our Lord and Saviour. Again, after sleep I go, and again, another startling awakening with another scriptural reference. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 to 24. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let him be eternally condemned. Am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preached is not something that man made up. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many Jews of my own age and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when God, who set me apart from birth and called me by His grace, was pleased to reveal His Son in me so that I might preach Him among the Gentiles, I did not consult any man, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was. But I went immediately into Arabia and later returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Peter and stayed with him fifteen days. I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that what I am writing you is no lie. Later I went to Syria and Cilicia. I was personally unknown to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they praised God because of me. Now, if that isn't confirmation that I should be listening to God and not the conflicting information in the video I watched, then I don't know what is. Thank you, Jesus, for revealing your truth to me directly in spirit. I asked and it was given to me, just as you said it would be. God bless you all, my dear brothers and sisters. May this video bring glory to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ.